Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining. This is your host, Nino. And in today's episode, I would like to guide you through a couple of terminals which are available on iOS. And the first one, which everybody should know, is certainly Ish, the iShell, which is an entire Alpine Linux environment, and which is really nice, but not the topic of today's video, because if you do a uname A, you see it is an i686 Linux system. In other words, this thing is fully emulated and thinks it's running on a Pentium style machine. So that's not what we will be going through today. Instead, on the screen in the third line, you see the four terminals sorted in ascending order uh, according to their capabilities that we shall be trying out now. Well, as we do so, kindly be advised, um, there might be still residuals of previous experiments because I actually already tried to show you that, but somehow this recording managed to be done without sound, so it was futile. Without further ado, let's jump into the first one, open term, somehow the least capable of them all. So that's what it looks like. It doesn't tell you really much, and when you do an LS, <laughs> It, it's not terribly helpful and if you want to see where all the interesting stuff is happening and you're typing echo path always an issue for me with a dollar sign if i had a dollar every time i type path and i just might be typing it correctly but you see something extremely pointless is happening when you do that and here's a little hint you actually can type help and when you do so you get the commands which are contained and that's not actually true. It's containing less than what is showing. Like sure, there is super necessary stuff which everybody needs every day, like the barometer. <laughs> it's like, remember like measuring the height of a building with a barometer, you throw it down and you measure how long it takes until it hits the ground. So anyway, that's what we're having here. Um, I'm not even sure do we have NatCat. No, we don't. Like it's listed up here. You see it up here just right after move. But no, it doesn't actually work. If you do vim, vim whatever dot txt, they oftentimes these editors and these terminals demand you to demand you to pick some sort of file. And then, you know, this is not vim. This is just any kind of editor and it's quite pointless. They all look the same sort of, like if you're in these pseudo terminals, then they all do look um, similar. But you know, you, you're supposed to have SSH, but you don't have SSH. You're supposed to have NC like netcat, but you don't really have netcat. FTP, oopsie, FTP is not going anywhere. And when I say help, help and see perchance. Okay, so apparently I can listen on some certain port. And that's just great, but and see local host. I mean, I'm in airplane mode, so maybe just won't. So this is doing really absolutely nothing. All right, so that's not terribly helpful. Now let's try something else then. We see open term unfortunately won't really cut it and we don't even have the lingua franca of such terminals which I also value very much on Android namely BC a sort of GNU program which is actually very capable and looks like the love child of basic and C as I'm used to telling. Now the next one, and actually my favorite, is Term Emul. This one is pretty capable. So here again, um, when we type help, we sort of see what it is having. And you can see here already more commands than that. And uh, it, it doesn't have VI, I believe, but it has something which it is calling its editor. All the same, there is always some form of weirdness with these. Yeah, edit, actually, the last thing. 
there's some form of weirdness with these terminals. I'm not sure if I had been looking for for anything in particular, what I would have been able to actually pipe its output. It turns out that the piping doesn't really work all that well. And if I say edit, edit new text, then again, you are having some sort of, uh, you know, editor where you can like type things like utterly primitive. It doesn't actually deliver any specific capabilities. Forgive my somewhat loud neighbors. Anyway, I click close and then it asks just save, don't save. And I say don't save. So this is an editor somewhat less capable than what you would be finding on a TRS-80 Model 100 or things like that. Which, by the way, is a famous editor because it is allegedly one of the last things where Bill Gates was doing programming himself. I mean, the TRS-80 Model 100 editor. But you're having here Netcat 2, and I think this one is a little bit less brain damaged. So there you're having a more capable Netcat. However, um, without the small e or execute here option, so you cannot easily do a shell. In particular, a trick which otherwise might work and which I have been using sometimes on Android if I'm dealing with such a whiny version of Netcat is to, to pipe um, the standard input to it. You know, like, of course, the command would be more looking like somehow like Netcat listen. I, I'm not going to do the full command. I'm just going to show you the idea of it. And then you're piping it to a SH and then you're doing Netcat listen elsewhere, you know, and then you're having two different ports and you should be seeing what is happening in the shell in between. That does not work here, unfortunately, because um, everything is totally buffered. So if I do, for instance, cat the standard input into the shell, ah, shell command not found. This is again one of those weirdnesses. Okay, I'm just giving it and the file. I'm just going to, to do this and show it with another cat. Cat normally doesn't buffer, uh, does buffer anyway. You could avoid that if you had a DD and would set a block size of one byte and the conv of syncing. And then DD wouldn't buffer and would just output everything byte by byte. But here we don't have that lux luxury. So whatever I do, it will not be shown. You know, the second cat just doesn't stream it out. If I just press then end the file, that is control D, then it outputs everything at once. And that is how you would be operating here if you wanted to pipe. Though sometimes I have been having issues in particular over the network. But if I try something along these lines, uh, cat to cat to cat that I mean, I think this will work, but sometimes it doesn't, in particular if netcat is involved. Like this first would be a netcat, then would be a shell, then would be a netcat. And here it works, but over the network, sometimes it just doesn't. So you would have to have a highly batched environment in order to use that. In other words, it's pointless. But you do have BC, the binary calculator, and it is working, you know, like three, uh, oh, no, actually funnier. Yeah. Uh, let's try something like SQRT of 3.00 is 1.73. So this is typical BC behavior, giving you only so many decimal places as you have set either through the variable scale or as you have um, demanded when setting the task. So this is good. We are having... BC working. And what we're also having is Python 3. So we are having here Python 3. You see, so Python is, is, is running. Control D to leave it. And we are therefore having a, you know, um, editor. We are having BC and Python, so we can do computation. And I believe I don't think we have base64, but it would be fun. No, we don't. 
we do not have SCP to copy, copy anything, but we are having SFTP. So we would be actually able to get and put files somewhere. And I call that a reasonably decent environment, right? Like if we look at things, then, then this looks, it's not that bad, you know, we have Telnet and pay attention. We have only Python 3, but we do not have Python 2. I'm not saying that just as a little character study, but because <laughs> it will be mentioned later on. Python is the same as Python 3 here. It's just, I think they're linked to the same thing. What makes me an impression is that when you are typing help, uh, such a thing gets spat at you. So that gives me an idea that maybe they are using some sort of thing like BusyBox, but it doesn't seem to be BusyBox. Like if I say busy box, there's no command. If I say toy box, the alternative, there's nothing. So essentially that does not seem to be uh, the, the exact command, but it must be something along these lines. Really weird, and because I, before I echo the path, is this sh thing. When we were piping, it told us it has no sh, but we clearly see it here in the line above the last line, just above Python 3, there's a little sh in the beginning of the line. And if we do sh, then yeah, we do get somewhere, but we seemingly cannot pipe into it because then it just doesn't find it. So that, that's weird, right? And now, if we want to know where everything is situated, this is where the weirdness truly begins. For if we echo path over here, it's not quite as idiotic as the past one, right? Where it just <laughs> echoed dollar path rather than showing us the application path. And we see here essentially two interesting binary directories. Uh, mark that this string is ending in A. O -O -A. And the one binary is in document bin and the other one is in library bin. And now if I copy that, yeah, come on, let me copy that. And you know, we want to see what there is. And I paste it. Ta-da, nothing, okay? And if I go over here and, and change that to documents, right? We saw that it's under documents. There's again nothing. In other words, uh, this is flat out lying to us. That does not seem to be the true path. A way to figure out how things are running would be perchance by running Python 3 and then saying import sys and then just simply looking at the string sys, and what was it? So was it six, sys executable or sys exec, something like that. Yeah, that shows you what Python executable is actually running things for you here. And here see something strange. I told you the previous thing up there was having in the string, you hear just before the documents, A00A, like it's a long weirdo string, but ending on A00A. And here, the string is ending differently. It is ending in 3047. And that means that this executable, oh gosh, can I maybe just select things without being bugged all the time? So that means that this executable is just not running from where the path is telling us that things are running. So the path variable is lying to us. And if we try to list where things apparently are situated, eh, we're not allowed to get there. In essence, this is maybe not that it doesn't exist, but that if we go up, you know, everything's fine. But if we try to get one level further up, then the operation is not permitted. So we just don't have access to this location. In other words, we can run Python, but we cannot actually access this terminal environment's true binary directory. Nonetheless, with BC, Python, and working SSH uh, connection and, and so forth, I feel pretty comfortable. And again, to show you what's available, you know, you have grep, you, you have some primitive but present editor. So all in all, considering size versus functionality, this is in a way my favorite environment. And you do have Netcat, which would actually let you, you know, transfer files to and from this environment. 
so that's that's a good one. Yeah, you may remember that as opposed to open term, term will actually does serve its purpose. The next one is pretty capable, though a little fussy in in terms of how you run things. Lib term. So again, <laughs> greeted with nothing. And then we're getting a help screen that is maybe, maybe let me just change the size so you see what's actually happening because otherwise, done. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Okay, so if we say help now, gosh, what is this doing? Like this is total nonsense. Okay, let, let me restart the entire app because it now somehow just did the prompt big but nothing else. Let's hope everything will be now normal. Yeah, it is. So libterm version blah blah. And then you're having here a list of commands which this thing is having, right? And it tells you to use the package command to install third party commands and like, yeah, we, we may as well do that. But you're already having a decent connection of things. Again, you are having Python 3, but notice here on the top line, we're also having Python 2. So that's not the exact same thing of um, collection of such command let's as the previous one this is a different one its own one i see also something concerning lua here you see lua in the top line so this is an even better equipped terminal you're having not only netcat you're having also curl and i must say all over a well-equipped terminal and and it does work like it is again not having scp but it is having sftp and you know, with curl, with SFTP, things are actually better. It does not have VI, I believe, exactly. So you do again this edit new thing, and you're having again this totally ridiculous editor, which just offers you the option to close it and then tells you to save or not to. So, I mean, maybe it doesn't need much of a menu anyway, given that um, you can edit things quite properly with the selection, cut, paste, and so on abilities of iOS itself, right? The interesting thing is that um, if you want to run things through, if you want to compile things, you can run C code, but you are supposed to go through a couple of hoops to do that. So help compiling may show them to you. You see, so this is not exactly the way um, you would normally be doing that in, in a bigger Unix system. Nonetheless, you are having a C compiler, apparently. And even though it is somehow interpreting, apparently, these files, it is letting you do a little bit of C development. And if you just want to achieve what I call algorithmic clarity, like try out something so you understand how it works, then that is actually very capable. And one might say, if you insist on having a terminal with C, then maybe that's a very good selection. Like I do like it. Now, Netcat, unfortunately, again, does not have the E option. So you cannot really get into the system all that well. You can only get out of the system. But uh, for that, what it's capable of, this is, this is not a bad option. So... I, I'm actually quite satisfied with that terminal as well. Of course, you know, each time you get to a more ca capable one, it also consumes more resources. And we're having a really big one. <laughs> this is a really funny one. Ah, uh, yeah, I think I didn't show you the path thing, right? Let's try the path thing. I actually forgot how this is going. Echo path. Is this one going to tell us the truth? So we're having here these paths. We notice these little E1 things, right? And we copy that and we list, we list what is there. Never met this man in my life, right? And if we go to Python 3 and just simply say again, 
import sys and then we say sys executable then once again we are actually having something whose string does not end in as you can see here on the top line for e1 but which ends in e0f so again we're not actually being shown the true parts of the executables and the situation is uh, quite as in term emul you just don't get to reach them a shell is somewhat different now it doesn't actually greet you like that it greets you more like this and having learned already that you can press help you are getting this help screen which is less helpful than the others because you know he tells you is a terminal emulator with many unix commands ls pwd tar and what whatever else but where are they and can i have a list of everything please so he tells you you can add packages with pkg you can have a view of all of them by simply saying pkg search and not saying for what oh. Okay, somehow did not work this time. Maybe I'm misremembering it. Maybe Pukuga search was working here. Package search. So he said that with package we can add things. Yes. Okay. Package list. So you see, they are partly extensible and maybe you can get things, but yeah, or maybe package source. Yeah, let's see this GitHub repo. Okay, it just throws me into the browser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I won't end up uh, my airplane mode because I'm getting right now a lot of disturbances from the outside. So anyway, it must be able to get some packages for you and some such functionality also exists here no packages installed yet if we say package search maybe with an asterisk doesn't help ah it can't fetch them it just can't fetch them because i'm in airplane mode uh, but normally we'll be getting a list of the packages okay i will turn it on for a second yeah much better so that's how you you see i'll turn on back my airplane mode <laughs> don't want to be disturbed now so you see what you're having here some of the stuff is actually not bad in particular up here you're having base 64 now that's interesting if you want to transfer binary files and you are having down there also split so you actually can do that. You actually can transport stuff. And interestingly, here, let me put it on the top line. You're having F2C, in case you would like to be writing Fortran code over here. So that's great, but we still don't know exactly where stuff is situated, right? And I believe here, for the first time, we were having a more reasonable path environment, right? And we're not taking the first one because this is relating to Perl but we might be taking this one and oh yeah come on stop stop whining okay anyway i'll copy it and i'll fix it as i work with it and i'll need to move over here no don't mark it just just move I'll need to get rid of this bin. Oh, this is so most terribly annoying. Okay, whatever. Can I edit this, please? I don't want this. Okay, whatever. I will have to perhaps control C and edit it in its little editor which it doesn't have uh, so we'll try vim yeah it does have an actual vim implementation uh, escape i just wanted to press i and then i'm gonna paste this total nonsense 
and then I'm going to press escape again and then let me navigate up here and left here oh, yoy. and then let me just nuke this X with X here this thing so yeah please just you know select all stop stop whining all that badly finally my gosh I hate the selection abilities here anyway now I got it now I can finally list the path we're having and for the first time we got someone who is not lying at us and who is actually showing us where the stuff is sort of situated I say sort of because I think these are just links or something like that because all of these binaries seem to be executed through something called web assembly and here we do have SCP yeah, as you see here on the top line and SFTP this is the most luxurious of the um, of the environments however it also comes at the size of one and a half gigabyte nonetheless yeah you see it has clang and nonetheless um it's big but also useful it has bc it has python it has everything so i must say all in all yeah it has lua and it has this and it has actual editors such as as you saw vi it also has pico i believe yes exactly and then you can say Control x and you're getting out of there so that is the most powerful of the terminal environments which you can like get into in order to have a more localized experience on ios unfortunately he writes that the compiler is and so far a bit limited as you cannot be having active user interaction but it would accept happily piping from another program and there of course i'm thinking you can be catting things into it or something i haven't tried yet and for most algorithms which one wants to experiment with it's perhaps also not necessary but if you want a more capable environment then indeed a shell might be for you so that's it for today thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope to greet you here soon again until next time have a great day and from me goodbye